older Gen Z, I'm not talking about the 11 year olds, older Gen Z and like younger mid-age millennials, those are the two most screwed up generations because they are so close to each other, yet they are so different and they both think that they are better than the other and more progressive and they just fight all the time about nonsense. Welcome back to the comment section. I'm Brett Cooper. I want to jog your memory about an article that I read back in June, right after Roe v. Wade was overturned. I did an entire episode about it in the wake of that Supreme Court decision, and Gen Z was flipping their shit because they could no longer kill their own babies. So we're going to start with that and then dive into a very, very weird online conversation about why Gen Z might not be having any more sex. Before we get into that, though, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, and ring that notification bell so that you never miss a comment section or off-the-clock episode. All right, so this article that I referenced was from June. I did a whole episode about it. I'll try to find it, maybe link it in the description so you can see what I was saying back last year, but it's from Insider, and it said, swearing off men and avoiding intimacy. Gen Z reconsiders sex in the wake of a post row world. And there were so many quotes from people my age of saying it's just not safe anymore and like hookup culture is dying and I don't have freedom anymore so I'm going to stop having sex. And my thoughts at the time were, you know, yeah, actually, you should have been trying to be safe this entire time and not be relying on abortion as a form of birth control. And if you are suddenly stopping having sex just because of that, then we have a deeper conversation to be had about how safe or not safe you were being. But anyway, you can watch that episode if you're interested. Nine months later, Gen Z is still digging their heels in, apparently, and millennials and academics are flipping their shit trying to study and understand why Gen Z is not having as much sex. Here's some articles. This is from Vogue. This is what the sex lives of Gen Zers are actually like. Like, that's just creepy. Is that just me? Like adults trying to say, like I get like anthropology and studying the habits of people, but just objectively in the culture that we live in right now, where everybody is so fascinated by the sexuality of young people, it just rubs me the wrong way. Here's one from The Guardian. It stopped me having sex for a year. Why Generation Z is turning its back on sex positive feminism. The movement championed the right to enjoy sex and was supposed to free women from guilt or being shamed. But now many are questioning whether it has left them more vulnerable. Oh my God. Screwing anything that walks? Watching obscene amounts of porn? Just throwing yourself out there to be objectified? Shocking that that would have mental or emotional ramifications. Emotional damage! Here's another one. Why is Gen Z so sex negative? A prehistory of the puritine. We're gonna get into the puritine in a second. Here's another one. Gen Z's so-called sex negativity is very progressive, actually. There's a lot of this where people are trying to spin it. They're saying, no, 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 no. Mm -mm, they're not becoming right wing. Uh-uh, oh, no, they're not. It's actually very progressive. And in a way, I kind of agree with that because the reasons why Gen Z is having this attitude are not right-wing or conservative at all. But from what I can infer, most of these people writing these articles are asserting that Gen Z thinks that the sex positivity movement has gone too far, engaging in hookup culture is expected rather than being a choice that you have the freedom to make, porn is more readily available and normalized than ever before, which objectively has made sexual relationships between men and women worse and often more violent and rough. And then on top of all of that, the point that stood out to me the most is that they are saying that logistically, it does not make sense for Gen Z to be having sex right now, specifically because the economy is so crazy that many Gen Zers that are my age and a little bit older are still living with their parents. So they're not gonna be bringing sexual partners home to like mom and dad's house, be, you know, knocking boots in the basement or whatever. And then on top of that, they are apparently not getting their driver's licenses at 16 years old. And so many people in my generation are not driving. I had no idea that this was something that was going on. Here's an article from Fox. No drive to drive. Gen Z is getting behind the wheel less than generations before them. Washington Post, I'll call an Uber or 911. Why Gen Z doesn't want to drive? Why do young men need to get their driver's license so that they can take a real girl out on a date when they could just stay in their parents' house and watch porn all day? There's no motivation to leave your house. I think lockdown contributed to a lot of that because it just kept people boxed inside on their computers. And now my entire generation is just permanently chronically online watching porn, having no actual connections in the real world. Additionally, the worry about environmentalism is stopping my generation from driving because they don't want to contribute to emissions. Like, OK, get over it. You can still use the metro like leave. Leave your house, please. And then back on the topic of porn, a lot of these experts and academics and millennials that are fascinated by Gen Z's having sex or not having sex, they were talking about porn, you know, being more violent, causing relationships to be rough, that sort of thing. I actually think that the increase in porn watch time in my generation has just made everybody more numb. Like think about that Jubilee video that I reacted to a couple of weeks ago. It was the mask off video and the young men were being asked about their porn consumption. And one guy said like he has been watching porn for so long and he's only like 17 or 18 years old. He is so numb to everything that only the most extreme types of porn 
arouse him and turn him on because he is literally so numb to everything else that having like a sexual relationship in the real world doesn't even get him there that he needs porn he needs transgender porn or whatever he's watching to get him there like i think that is the real reason because they are so numb to everything around them like no wonder gen z is not interested in sex like why would they be now i'm not saying that all of this is totally bad because on the surface i think it would be healthy if my generation was stepping away from hookup culture but i do not think that this is being done due to any kind of self-respecting moral reason. Like my generation isn't going, oh, I don't want to cheapen myself. I want to, you know, respect myself and make sure that I'm saving myself for the right person. I don't want to, you know, jump the gun on this. No, like the things causing this attitude shift are not healthy at all. A lack of independence and insane porn consumption, being afraid that the world is going to end, like those aren't healthy motivating factors. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the mainstream media has become increasingly fascinated with trying to figure out this Gen Z shift over the last couple of years. And it has only gotten more intense after Roe was overturned because then you had all these Gen Z girls saying like, we're going on a sex strike, we're doing all of this, whatever. But this has been going on for the past two years. And back in 2021, a term was coined to describe Gen Z in this new anti-sex trend. The Puritans. Not Puritans, but the Puritans. Now, like I said, Puritans first popped up in 2021 when hashtag cancel porn was trending on Twitter, which was largely driven by young people, you know, saying like, oh, we don't really think this is healthy, especially due to the unethical nature of porn and the sex trafficking allegations with porno, which are all very, very serious and should be talked about. And then almost immediately, the older generations online coined this term Puritans for my generation. And then it just became like 35 year olds arguing with 18 year olds about it. The waters became much it was just it's very very weird but we're still having this conversation like there's a new ad campaign in the uk it just came out on valentine's day and they have all these billboards now all over the uk and it says your parents had more sex than you sex is dying we're here to save it and the company is sex brand they are a new wellness line with like sustainable condoms and it's just it's weird like first of all the fascination with getting young people to have sex that just rubs me the wrong way now if this was somebody like elon musk putting up these billboards who is genuinely very concerned about depopulation and our population decline and he wanted to do something shocking to get people to keep having kids and populating the earth that would be one thing but it's just a condom brand so you know they're just wanting people to just go bang in the back of cars, basically. It's just, it's weird, and it's adults being too interested in young people. I don't know. Somebody tweeted this in 2021, but it still rings true to me on this subject. This guy said, the concept of the puritine is the most insane and perverted moral panic ever. Hundreds of 35-year-olds on the internet freaking out because they think the teenagers are insufficiently horny. Like, on the surface, yes, it's very, very weird. It feels freaky and chronically online, and the fascination with young people having sex is so odd, but I get where adults are coming from because they think that the younger generation is stupid and they think the younger generation should be acting in the traditional way that they were as teenagers. So it's just, the whole point is that it's two generations fighting with each other who were raised in drastically different times. Now, some other examples of this happening in real time online, Penn Bagley, who was in Gossip Girl and he stars in You, he announced a couple of weeks ago that he would no longer be doing any nudity or sex scenes out of respect for his wife and his marriage, which I think is fantastic. I wholly support that. It set the internet ablaze and a lot of Gen Z was really excited about it because he was being like male feminist, yay, respecting his queen, whatever. Penn Bagley requesting to have zero intimacy scenes moving forward with any of his projects because he respects his marriage too much and feels it's unnecessary to both his public image and acting is the only thing that brings me hope for men today. Somebody replied and said, it is crazy how intimate slash sex scenes weren't really prominent in movies until about 50 to 60 years ago. And somebody retweeted this exchange and said, kids want one thing and it's the return of the Hayes Code. So the Hayes Code was, it was a self-imposed set of regulations in Hollywood. It was in like the middle of the 20th century and it prevented nudity and like excessive violence, showing rape, sex scenes, vulgarity, toilets. Now back in the day when leftists actually cared about free speech and free love and they were on that train, they argued that this set of regulations inhibited true art from happening. But now apparently they want it back. And in my point of you in looking at what has happened with our culture maybe keeping the haze code wouldn't have been <laughs> the worst thing ever like obviously i don't think it's necessary but still like we just are living in a dumpster fire so maybe it would be great if i wasn't seeing all of that stuff on my screen but anyway i digress somebody else tweeted and said all of this puritine discourse is wild like i didn't have sex until i was an adult and i'm back in therapy because i have such an unhealthy relationship with my sexuality why do you want to repress yourself like this is the part that weirds me out why are you making this some big cultural societal generational thing that sounds like a you problem 
You being in therapy is not because of something your generation did. It's just something that happened in your life. And I guarantee your experience is not the same as what Gen Z is going through right now because they are screwed up in a very different way. Another chronically online adult was responding to this, you know, discourse about sex scenes and movies and said this, what's the point of this sex scene? Well, it established the nature of the relationship between these two characters and affirmed that they have a healthy physical intimacy and vulnerability with each other. And oh yeah, it was fun to watch, you weird nerd. And while I'm at it, the modern obsession with plot and lore is baby brain stuff. Sometimes you just watch some stuff occur and it's all thematically resonant, even if it's not a save the cat approved line of dominoes loading down a cinema sins approved hallway that does not bend. My brain hurts. This is just a terrible take, but I have to start with the first tweet. Like he's defending sex scenes and saying, you know, it shows healthy intimacy, whatever. Most sex scenes these days are not that. Like think about euphoria. There is nothing that is loving or intimate in that. It's all weird and gross and teenagers having orgies and that kind of thing. Your point is mute. And then he's saying that plot and lore is baby brain stuff. And you just want thematically aesthetic blobs of art walking around and then a sex scene dropped in. No, like everybody simply wants like instant gratification in the adrenaline rush of a sex scene. That's actually what he's advocating for. But apparently the older generations are just less numb to that than Gen Z is. And they are very concerned with the sexual activities of young people. But to be fair, the Gen Z takes on this are just as weird as that person. Like somebody said, you're saying that it's predatory to like to see hot people on TV. Are you being serious? And this girl replies and says, you think it's wrong to peep through windows at a husband and wife being intimate, right? I truly hope so. It's the same thing for a movie scene. You're watching somebody be vulnerable and intimate without their immediate knowledge. Again, most sex scenes these days are not vulnerable and intimate. They're strange and usually very gay and maybe trans and odd. Like, come on, like stop jumping through hoops. You feel weird about it. It doesn't seem appropriate. You can just say that and have an opinion. You don't need to turn this into a conversation about consent and sex empowerment or whatever. This whole discourse is weird and it is confusing. And this has been one of the most exhausting episodes I've ever filmed because these two generations are so stupid and they are fighting about ridiculous things. And I have no solid answer for you or message. I'm just wanting to explain it because it's trending again online. But from my point of view, None of this is objectively good, considering the things that have brought about this attitude shift for Gen Z, like the excessive porn usage, the stifled independence, fear that the world is ending, not dry, all of that. That isn't healthy. I'm not saying we need to, you know, bring back hookup culture, but like Gen Z has problems. Millennials have problems. These two generations, if you've learned anything from this episode, is that they are sick in the head and all they think about is sex, apparently. Thank you for watching the comment section. If you want to see more videos just like this, make sure to subscribe to this channel, turn on your notifications, like this video, and of course, if you want even more content, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I'm Brett Cooper. See you next time.